Hi there YouTube and welcome back to the channel. Um, today I would like to give a brief explanation to the functioning of uh, near infrared light and all the side effects, the healing effects, the positive stuff that we get from it. And I intend to make this about a five minute video so I'll try to be brief. Um, the sources for this information are publicly available on pubmed.com. Most of them as abstracts, but you can extract quite a lot of information from them. Um, that's what I'm about to show you here. I have here an extract from a study done by Dr. Hamblin. He is one of the world-renowned experts on this subject. And I thought I would try and shed some light on it and make it a little bit understandable for uh, us laymen that are not, uh, how to say that, bioengineers and biochemists and you know people of those uh, professions. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do it old-fashioned. I'm going to zoom in on the screen and try to walk you through there. Okay and here we are. Well then, Dr. Hamblin. Um, I'm going to give you a brief introduction into uh, where it comes from historically and then I'm going to look at the mechanisms that are at play when you start shining in near-infrared light into your body. History. Um, bio, photobiomodulation was discovered about 50 years ago by Indre Mester in Hungary. Uh, essentially he was a researcher that was a bit worried that laser light could damage our skin or damage our cells. So he decided to take an experiment and basically take a couple of lab rats, shave their hair off and expose them to near infrared light to see if there would be any cell damage that he could find. What he found was actually the opposite. The mice that were exposed to the laser light actually healed faster and their hair grew back quicker as compared to the mice that were not treated with uh, red light. In this case, we're talking about red light, not about near infrared light. Um, but at least the discovery was made that red light would have an influence and later on we'd find that near infrared light would even be more effective because it penetrates the, uh, the skin and tissue much better. Now, the work is done in uh, the mitochondria. Now, if you don't know what mitochondria are, uh, neither did I a couple months back, so that's not necessarily surprising. Uh, mitochondria are the power plants of the cell they basically uh, recycle ADP into ATP, adrenal triphosphate, and this is used as the energy carrier within the cell. So without ATP, basically your cell cannot live. Um, this is very important and the interesting part of near infrared is that it actually helps the mitochondria make more ATP. And the most important mechanism that it uses for that is called photo dissociation. Uh, photo, of course, meaning light and dissociation means to separate. And it uh, separates the inhibitory nitric oxide from the uh, heme and Cu centers. Well then, uh, what that means is, uh, to give you an analogy, is that you have, uh, let's say, an airport with um, 50 gates. And of those 50 gates, you may have, say, five gates that have oxygen and the rest of them have nitrous oxide. Now, if you want to complete this uh, electron transport chain and the respiratory chain, you need to use oxygen and you cannot use nitric oxide. What the near infrared does is kick out the nitrous oxide from the gate so that the oxygen can dock there. And if the oxygen docks there, you have more oxygen to work with and thus a more efficient uh, respiratory chain. That sounds pretty simple, it is actually that simple. Um, basically what happens is you have a ratio of 1 to 10. So out of, one, out of 10 uh, gates you have 9 of them with nitrous oxide and 1 of them with oxygen. And if you can get more oxygen in and less nitrous oxide, you can produce much more ATP. That's the baseline uh, functionality we're talking about here. The second one here is that um, in normal cells, the uh, reactive oxygen species are increased and in uh, stress cells, it is decreased. So it seems to have some kind of balancing function. 
um, that balances the uh, oxidative stress cells down to the right amount of reactive oxygen species. And that means it will further help you heal. Now, if I go further here, this is a pretty interesting part. Uh, photobiomodulation activates NFKB in normal cells. Well, you may ask yourself, what is NFKB? Uh, I ask myself the same question. So luckily I have here Wikipedia. NFKB is nuclear factor kappa light chain enhancer. It's a protein complex that controls the transcription of DNA, cytokine production and cell survival. Basically, it switches the cell on to produce DNA and um, it enhances the production of cytokines and it enhances the survival of the cell. So it basically gives the cell a signal to start working. And that's a very useful thing, especially if you have inflammation or if you have any kind of cell damage or uh, otherwise a wound or anything else going on, you want to have that NFKB to be activated. And if you can prime your cell to do that, then you have a better result, you have faster healing. Another important part on account of the white blood cells, photobiomodulation reduces levels of pro-inflammatory cytokines in activated inflammatory cells. So when your cells are inflamed, photobiomodulation helps to reduce the level of inflammatory cytokines. Is another important part, especially for people that have chronic inflammation, so as people that suffer from Alzheimer's or uh, people that suffer from uh, arthritis, for instance. Uh, this is a big problem and you can reduce that problem by applying near infrared and red light. Then we come to one of my favorites, um, which is the effect of photobiomodulation on macrophage phenotypes. Now, a macrophage is a white blood cell. It is a hunter-type bl white blood cell. It goes out and chases uh, things like bacteria, fungi, and other pathogens in your blood. It's kind of like the army of your body. It defends your body against uh, these kind of invaders. But this can also be used to uh, help in disposing of cellular protein debris and stimulation of healing by angiogenesis. Now, angiogenesis is the building of new blood, uh, blood veins, which is very important. You have to have, if you have any kind of damage to your uh, tissue, you have to have the blood veins to get into that area and fix the problem. This is also very much the case in, in, in people that suffer from chronic pain because in many cases chronic pain is caused by lack of oxygen at the site and thus also lack of blood vessels at the site that have adequate blood flow. So whenever, whatever you can do to increase the blood flow in that area, it basically means more oxygen, more glucose, more building blocks, uh, more healing. It's as simple as that. And what it can do is you can program your uh, white blood cells with near-infrared light, which is very interesting. You have phenotype M1 and phenotype M2. M1 is the soldier and M2, you could say, is the construction worker that starts building blood vessels and starts clearing the site of debris. And, and that helps a lot in, uh, in, in healing because it means you have an extra force at work right there where you need it. And it does not affect these uh, white blood cells that are in other areas of the body. So don't worry, you're not removing the army, so to say. You're only doing it locally where you radiate your body with uh, near infrared light. Okay, um, then I can go further here. Nitrous oxide release is another interesting part because if you release nitrous oxide, it has another interesting side effect. It dilates your blood vessels. It actually makes your blood vessels relax and therefore you can have more blood flow to the area where you need it. And this is another major advantage. So um, where it comes to um, basically uh, photobiomodulation and brain diseases, brain issues, uh, I look here at a research that they found an increase in nitrous oxygen release uh, with 660 nanometers at the higher fluences and they carried out an interesting study looking at the effects of photobiomodulation on the microglia. And the microglia is a specific white blood cell that helps protect your brain. 
So they looked at microglia and the interaction with cartial neurons. They used both primary microglia isolated from mouse brains and the BV2 mouse microglial cell line and compared four fluences. So fluence means the amount of light that they emit uh, at that particular site. They used 0.2, 4, 10 and 30 joules per square centimeter at 800, uh, 808 nanometers. And they used uh, fluences between 4 and 30 joules per square centimeter. Induced expression of M1 markers in uh, microglia. Now that's pretty interesting. So the M1 is the protective one and the M2 is the builder one. Markers of the M2 phenotype, including CD206 and TIPM1, were observed at lower energy densities of 0.2 to 10 joules per square centimeter. So basically what it says here is that you can control with dosage what type, what phenotype of macrophage and what phenotype of microglia you can promote in the brain. Which I think is very interesting because in this case, uh, in the brain, we want to have the M2 phenotype because if you're suffering from Alzheimer's or if you're suffering from uh, Parkinson's disease, you want these uh, microglia to go and clean the site. And as you can see, you need a relatively low dose to do so. So it is very interesting. Uh, it demonstrated a dose-dependent effect of photobiomodulation on microglial-induced neural, uh, neuronal growth. So it also um, it benefits the growth of your neurons, which is very important. Your neural flexibility essentially decides uh, how intelligent you are amongst things, but it also shows the health of the brain. And um, what we can see is that uh, photobiomodulation has an effect on neuroinflammation. And neuroinflammation is a major issue when you're looking at Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. Okay, well, I'm going to keep it short as I had promised. Um, probably not five minutes, but short enough. <laughs> short enough to be able to explain everything that I wanted to explain. Um, I hope that gave you a bit of an intro in what I'm talking about here. I think it is a pretty interesting set of facts here. If you um, found that I made any mistakes, please comment me on YouTube and uh, let me know what I was wrong at. Uh, I, I gladly receive any, any kind of feedback from anyone out there. I am by no means an expert on, in this field, not at all. I'm an electronics design engineer. I don't normally do stuff like this, but I find it very fascinating and I'm learning my way forward. I hope this video helps you learn a little bit as well. And if you like it, give it a thumbs up. If you are generally interested in photobiomodulation, subscribe um, I'm gonna try and make at least one video a week and um, thank you for watching see you next time <laughs>